seeing this. All right, so we're gonna be starting up in just a second. We are glad for all of you who are joining us today. Um, kicking up, kicking off our penultimate Green Living Seminar uh, of the year. Um, many of you know me, I'm Elena Traster in the Environmental Studies Department here at MCLA. This semester's Green Living Seminar is organized around the theme, Greening the City. All presentations are free and open to the public. They take place on Wednesdays at 5.30 here in room 121 of the Feigenbaum Center for Science and Innovation. You can find the schedule and links to recordings of prior presentations on our website at www.mcla.edu slash green living, one word. Our presentation today will again last for about half an hour with some time at the ends for some Q&A and discussion. And before I turn it over to our speakers for today, I want to make a quick announcement about our last presentation next week. On April 20th, we will be hearing from Nicholas Russo. He's a senior transportation planner with the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission. We'll be presenting a talk titled Bicycling in Berkshire County. Today's presentation titled Williamstown Composts, Lessons from a Community Composting Pilot Program will be given by Nancy Nylon and Ann McCallum. Thanks very much. So uh, I'm Ann McCallum and I live in Williamstown and I'm an architect there and um, have really nothing to do with this topic at all, except for as you'll hear in a minute, mm -hmm. um, you'll hear how I came to be participating in this pilot. And while Nancy's introducing herself, what she does, I'm going to hand out our first prop. <laughs> so we're going to give you all oranges, and then we're going to collect your organic material, <laughs> the waste products, in our compostable bag. So, all right, Nancy. All right. Uh, thank you, Anne. Hi, I'm Nancy Nyland, and I also live in Williamstown. Um, and I'm with the Williamstown Cool Committee. That's the Climate Action Committee. Cool stands for CO2 lowering. And um, I actually was at the Center for Eco Technology for decades, really. And so um, when this project started, and you'll be hearing about the history, um, people approached me to see if I wanted to come to a meeting, get involved, and uh, and I. I'm not sure I should say I made the mistake of going to a meeting, but I, I got hooked and, uh, and so here, here I am. So I will Thank you. wait for Anne to come and kick us off. Okay, so um, I'm gonna hand out one of these bags and I'll just put it at the first person here and you can just pass it around and fill this up. So this is not a, um, Recyclable bag. This is a compostable bag. Big difference, um, but so because this is a material that actually can biodegrade in a compost heap of the hot variety, which you will learn about. So uh, my interest in this project came about from an article I read in the New Yorker magazine probably a year and a half ago, and it was just mind-boggling to me, eye-popping, when I read these things. Now, you probably all know these statistics, but I did not. So here's what I read in the New Yorker. So it says, paper and plastic are separated, but recycling of organics, food waste, yard waste, pretty much anything that rots, remains voluntary, even though such material makes up about a third of our trash. A third of our trash is organic waste. And I'm gonna go back to my little article, but I wanted to do an aside that this lecture is about composting, but a critical part of organic food is, is wasting of the food before it ever uh, is used. Um, and I think that I read somewhere that 40% of our food is thrown away rather than consumed. And so that's a huge area where there's room for improvement. But we're, we're not gonna talk any more about that. Okay, so organic waste doesn't just stink when it's sent to landfills. It becomes a climate poison. Yes, we've been schooled again and again in the importance of recycling, but the recycling of organics is arguably more important than that of plastics, metal, or paper. Composting transforms raw organic waste into a humus-like substance called compost that enriches soil and enhances carbon capture. In landfills, however, 
starved of oxygen, which is a critical need uh, for composting, oh, a necessary component of composting, decomposing organics release methane when there's no oxygen, uh, a greenhouse gas whose warming effects in the long run are 56 times those of carbon dioxide. That was amazing. The United States has greater landfill emissions than any other country, the equivalent of 37 million cars on the road each year. So I was totally unaware of just how much this stream of organic matter uh, contributed to um, global warming. And I thought if I was unaware that there were probably many others who were also unaware. Um, and it seemed to me that maybe I could do something about this at the local level, if not at the global level. And I would try and bring awareness to Williamstown and my little project would be to try and get more people in Williamstown to separate out their food waste from, their, from the um, landfill stream and turn what is uh, a really valuable resource if composted, but a disaster if put into a landfill. So that was what the idea was. Um, so then um, I was talking about this and thinking about how I would go about doing this, getting people involved. And I was talking to a friend of mine who teaches environmental studies at Williams, Sarah Gardner. And she said that in her program, in her class that she teaches, or one of her classes, they have um, students take on projects with the um, local community. And she thought that maybe this could be a project for her students. And it event ended up being just that. So we worked with a couple of students, and they helped us organize, get some brochures ready, do some facts and figures, and help us with some background um, information. And gradually, we got more people involved, um, and it, it grew. And Nancy's going to tell us now about all the partners that we have in our little adventure. OK, great. Thank you. Um, and I, I guess I also remember that when Anne got involved with this, initially the thought was maybe we should look at having a mandate um, in Williamstown requiring that people uh, you know, compost their food waste. And so the environmental studies class studied you know, what would be the most effective way to have us begin reducing food waste in Williamstown, and then came up with the recommendation, you know what, maybe we start with a pilot program. We kind of start small. Um, there's a lot of education uh, to be done. As Anne said, she was unaware. I was unaware. <laughs> and I've been working in, this, in the environmental field for my entire career. But my, my work was more in the energy efficiency and clean energy arena. And this was just a real wake up call that we could possibly uh, really be wasting 40% of our food. I, I still cannot really uh, comprehend that. Yeah. So um, we thought, OK, so we're going to start a pilot program, but we need a lot of people to do it, as it turned out. Um, and so we took a look at what was happening now in Williamstown. Because if you want to make change, take a look at what is happening. And then how do you kind of mirror that and make you know, sort of incremental change? Um, we have a, a waste hauler, uh, Casella who um, picks up waste now from you know, many uh, residents and businesses. Including and, MCLA. Including MCLA. And also, um, we have a transfer station in Williamstown, and they have the contract uh, to pick up the waste from the transfer station. So they're very involved. Um, and they also have a compost facility in um, Vermont, in Bennington, just over the border. So, uh, so they seemed like they were going to, they, they were interested in being a, a partner. The town of Williamstown uh, became a partner because they <laughs> uh, maintained the transfer station where we now take our, our waste. Uh, Williams College and the Center for Ecotechnology got involved because it turned out we needed some funding and uh, to, to install a shed at the compost, uh, at, at the transfer station. You'll see that in a minute. And uh, the Center for Ecotechnology administers something called uh, the Community Climate Fund, and Williams College is an investor in that. So they gave us essentially a grant to get us going. 
Um, we also worked, and Anne worked closely with Cinda, uh, Linda Cernick from the Northern Berkshire Solid Waste District right from the get-go, because we are, um, Williamstown is part of a, a collective of communities that's part of a waste district, and uh, they manage contracts to have our waste picked up. So they were very, Linda's been very supportive of this program. Um, and then, uh, in addition to looking at waste from residents, we also wanted to look at waste, food waste from our restaurants and schools. And, uh, and so we approached the Chamber of Commerce to help us with outreach to our businesses. So it really does take a village, and, and I'm sure we haven't even mentioned everybody. Um, so uh, we all came together and thought, what um, can we do to move forward? So we started to, as it says here, we started to drum up customers. So how were we going to find people to take part in our pilot program? Well, we talked to Casella about this and uh, because they were going to deal with uh, most of the waste that uh, we were going to collect. And they said that we could collect in two ways from them. One was they would pick up from customers where they already pick up their trash and recyclables. And would we please make a, an area, cordon off an area that's quite small so their truck didn't have to drive all over Williamstown. So this map here is a few little few blocks. It's not a very big area, but it's quite densely populated in Williamstown. It's Main Street, Route 2 is along the bottom of it, and Cole Avenue is down the middle. And so those are the houses that um, we were going to target. Uh, the second... Uh, method was going to be we could you could bring your compost if you were someone who takes your trash to the landfill to the transfer station we wanted you to be able to continue to do that so we wanted to have a place a collection place at the transfer station so that's part two the third was a lot of people like to um, compost in their backyards they have gardens and things so our third option for people was going to be you can uh compost in your backyard. And Linda Cernick had these things called earth machines, and you'll see a picture of them. Hey, do you have a picture? I do. Coming right up, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we got these brochures together. We made these brochures, and we went around, um, and we dropped them off at everybody's house in our target area. And it says, interested in participating in a pilot program for composting food-related garbage? If so, please read on. And we gave them, we told them about what the problem was and why it's important to compost. And then we listed our three options. And, um, and then we said, what can you compost? So this, this is called an eco cat. This is called a mic. Um, um, so the eco caddy is what we ended up using for people. Sorry, I don't even know how to put this back on. There, I had it upside down. Okay, so the eco caddy is um, supposedly animal proof. When you lift up the lid, it kind of locks in place, so you can keep it outside. And so people are encouraged to have a bin on their counter where they put all their food scraps, including paper towels, pizza boxes. There's a lot of paper you can, if it's messed up with food and isn't uh, recyclable as paper, then you can you can take it up to the Casella. Uh, facility in, in Bennington, and it can be composted. So, so that lives outside, and then as you fill up your bin on your kitchen counter, you bring it outside, and you dump it in your eco caddy. And then either Casella picks it up and dumps it into their truck, or you take it to the landfill, um, and you dump it into the bins that you will see in a minute. Um, so, so this went pretty, oh, this went pretty well. And we got, you know, a pretty good response back from our people. I think we had like 24 people signed up to do the um, uh, transfer station, and only about eight people wanted to do the the Casella pickup. Me being one, <laughs> and um, and we probably offloaded about eight of our earth machines for the backyard composting. So it was a, it was a little smaller than we were expecting. We were a little disappointed, but. Um, it was off to a start. And then we, we've been getting more people because if you're in the transfer station group and you see the compost shed and you're not in our pilot area, we said you could still join in because it doesn't 
make any more work for Casella um, because they're not driving their trucks around. There's just one pickup a week from the transfer station. So we have been getting steadily more uh, people who want to participate in that method. Okay, so here is the backyard composter. And um, as Anne said, you know, some people chose this uh, alternative because they really wanted to do things in their backyard. And um, I think about eight uh, signed up for that. And then, yeah. and then we went around in Anne's pickup truck and delivered the yeah. compost bins to them. This has been a real community project. Yeah. And I'd have to say it's probably about the most fun project I've worked on in terms of uh, the, the things that we've, we've done locally. Um, yes, and we had many field trips. We went to other towns we and did. looked at their facilities because a lot of other towns in Massachusetts have um, compost collection points. And so we went to see you know, how they dealt with it. What about the bears? What about the stink? You know, what about this? What about that? And we learned a lot from our various field trips. Um, and I was going to say the uh, Northern Berkshire Solid Waste District has also um, had a, um, since uh, we started this, um, they uh, offered backyard composters to people. And I think another 20 signed up in Williamstown. So it's really mm. picking up. Uh, and Anne and I have composted all the time. Um, and then there was the curbside option. So we wanted to make sure that people who do just leave their trash at the curb did have an option. And during the pilot, Casella agreed uh, for their customers that they would offer this pickup at no cost. Um, and then we thought, well, let's see how this goes. And then we'll, you know, evaluate and see what the cost might need to be uh, in the future. And then we, uh, this is the shed <laughs> that we purchased through the Community Climate Fund. And, uh, and it was installed at the transfer station, uh, purchased from, uh, purchased locally. And then uh, Anne had signs designed and made for the outside. So they described the, the project and then asked people to only come if they are signed up. And, uh, and then people who read this, who just go by curiously, they'll, you know, they've called us since then. So um, that's our little shed. And then if you walk into the shed, uh, these are the food totes that are food waste totes that are in there. So the ones with the green lids are um, for the food scraps. So when you bring your eco caddy in with your food waste from home, um, you dump in there. And then the bigger brown containers in the back have sawdust. And so to in order to keep the odor down in the shed, uh, what we do is have, uh, we put layers of sawdust over top to, um, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day. And then that's the eco caddy. And we were trying to figure out also how to make this easy for the town. So that's why we came up with this idea of having the eco caddy so that um, you didn't have to go buy a separate bag um, or have a um, separate sticker. The, the uh, attendant at the transfer station could just see, oh, if you have one of those green bins, I guess you're signed up we're going to just let you in. So that was kind of the way we got started on that. Um, and we did charge $20 for that, which has worked out well. Um, oh, yeah, and this is, and I, um, so when I go in and bring my, my food waste, even though I had been backyard composting, and I still will, during the winter, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little tougher to go out in the backyard and everything's frozen. Uh, I thought, well, I'm going to try this, and it'll be a way to try out our project. And also, you can uh, compost more things in, uh, in this um, method than I can in the backyard, and, and, and we'll be telling us about that. But there you see that people have put in their food waste, some of it in you know a paper bag or a compostable bag, and then we put the um, sawdust over it. And then it gets transferred, and you right. tell us about that. So this is the Bennington um, facility. And that's Trevor Mance, who's up at the top and demonstrating for us. And on, behind him on the left-hand screen, left-hand slide, is a windrow, which is just a long, linear pile. And in this case, that's the pile of just beginning uh, compost. So what they do is they take the truckloads of compost, they dump it down, they pull out things that shouldn't be there, and they've, they've told us there's been relatively little, like very little contamination, so that's a good thing. And then they mix it with some earlier developed compost, which already has microorganisms in it, and, they, and that's what that looks like. 
Um, so there's quite a lot of compost to the new food waste. Um, and so compost develops in two ways. Um, it's all done with heat. So the microorganisms like heat, and they like the organic material. Uh, and as uh, when it's not when it's just starting to heat up, um, the microorganisms, a certain kind of microorganisms um, called mesophilic, or at least that's the mesophilic part of the process, which means not as hot as the thermophilic one, which is the next part, which is hotter. So the microorganisms, they, they digest the um, organic material, and the waste material from them is heat, carbon dioxide, water, and humus, which is our compost. So the first step goes up to about 100 degrees with the first microbes, and that is the equivalent of what backyard composting can do. So it gets up to about 100 degrees. Um, and it can digest any organic matter that's not, not doesn't have other things with it. Um, but bones, it doesn't, can't do bones, it can't do paper, it can't do other things. Those particular microbiomes, um, microorganisms, I mean. So then when, as, the, as they develop heat in those windrows, because they're big and the heat doesn't escape, so inside the heat is developing and not escaping. So as it gets hotter, um, the first microorganisms die off. They can't stand the heat. And the second level starts a completely different kind of microorganisms. Um, and they move the, the material from that windrow further along behind Trevor into another one that has uh, pipes underneath it that, uh, where air can pass through. Air is really important to the process. Um, and that's the difference between uh, anaerobic and aerobic. So the anaerobic one is when there is not air present, and that the byproduct of that is not carbon dioxide, but it's methane, and that's the part we're trying to avoid. Now, you can have an anaerobic digester. Um, on a farm, they do these, and they have really big ones in places, and that takes the methane, and instead of just shooting it into the air, it burns it. So it's using it as an energy source. So that is a good way to use the methane. And from that process, you do get CO2 because you're burning and that's the byproduct. But it's not nearly as bad as just raw methane going into the atmosphere. But this doesn't have methane at all. So this is a low-tech way to um, compost organics. And so as the next phase, uh, so the oxygen is feeding the micro uh, organisms that are inside. It's also doing another thing. It's regulating the temperature. And that's what that thermometer is there that's stuck in the, in the middle. If it gets too hot, like over 150 degrees, those microorganisms die. So you don't want to do that. You want to get it to at least 130, though, because that's the temperature at which all the pathogens, or most pathogens, are killed. So it makes a much more um, uh, healthy um, product at the end. So if you had you know, manure and things in it that might have pathogens, they're gone by the time you reach 130. So um, that's, that's what happens there. Um, so the second group of microorganisms is very good at digesting the more stuff, tougher stuff, things that are um, complex carbohydrates, things that are like um, the bones, the the uh, things that are made from cellulose, like um, biodegradable plates and utensils, it can handle that. So the cellulose is something that the hotter temperatures can handle and the lower temperatures cannot. So when they finish making their um, compost, so then after they get, they get it to a certain point and they've learned over time how long to leave it, you know, eventually the um, microorganisms run out of food to digest and then they start to die off because there's nothing more to eat. And as the temperature cools, the first group materialize out of thin air um, and start digesting again anything that's left over. So after like a month or three months, it depends on your system, um, you get really good compost. Um, and they mix it with um, sort of uh, sterile dirt and make topsoil, or they sell it to you as compost for your garden, or they have a new method, new thing they do, which they mix it with bark chips. Um, so it's a compost bark chip mix, and they, people use it as mulch. 
but you don't take it away ever because it, it goes into your soil and the bark, the, bulk, the bark mulch also decomposes over the season. So it's a really, really good mulch for your garden. This just uh, maybe reminds us what some of the materials are that. Oh yeah. So all mm -hmm. the top um, down to, yeah, so the top three rows. No, it's, no, it doesn't divide up. But this is all what you could do. The, the green part above the not acceptable is what the, you can compost in hot. So look at all those things at the bottom, you know, tea bags, paper napkins, uncoated paper plates, kitchen paper towels, coffee grounds, all that, and, and the bones, all that can, can be composted. So that's why some of the erstwhile backyard people have opted to go for one of the other two options. Okay, so how are we doing? <laughs> um, as, Anne, as Anne said, we've had about 40 households um, participate so far. We, um, we're on, pretty much on track. We thought our goal was to have about 55, um, and we are about four months into the pilot program. So, um, and now word of mouth is starting to come. And we, we did the initial you know, dropping off of brochures. We haven't really done outreach since then. So uh, we wanted to move slowly, make sure we were getting the kinks worked out of the um, program. So now we will start you know, promoting it more. Um, we also had set, when we applied for funding through the Community Climate Fund, we looked at a goal of how many we would reach and then how much carbon we would reduce. And, um, and so we set a goal of reducing, uh, let's see, it was 12 tons of uh, carbon dioxide um, per year. And uh, as it turns out, we've now gotten a report back from Casella with the amount of waste they've already picked up from the shed, from people dropping off. We're already on track for meeting that goal, and we haven't um, hit the number of households we had expected. And we also um, are, have a goal of reaching five restaurants. And, um, and so that's our, our next um, phase of the program right now is working with restaurants. Um, They've been particularly difficult. <laughs> <laughs> We're very annoyed with our restaurants. I had, I had all these things that I brought down to them. I wrote these things, you know, this is, uh, we would like your restaurant to join us in this pilot and we tell them how and the cost, how to sign up and all that. And I went down and talked to all these people. I think Nancy did too. And we went like, and some people would be quite um, uh, keen on it. They thought this was a great idea. Yes, yes, we'll sign up, we'll sign up. And they would be people who Casella would pick up. So we'd go back, we'd Casella, we'd tell them, call that one, they're, they're ready to sign up. And they never do, they never did. So there's something between the initial enthusiasm and the follow through, and we haven't figured out what the magic trigger is. So we're still working on that. Um, so our suggestions, you know? <laughs> yeah, if you, we'll, we'll. What? Guilt, Guilt trip. trip. Yes, <laughs> I know. Well, we're, um, we um, are now working with um, Recycling Works Massachusetts. So s s the Center for Ecotechnology um, runs a program um, funded by the Department of Environmental Protection in Massachusetts to help um, restaurants and uh, large institutions set up composting um, in their facilities. Because uh, I think... Um, to not be too hard on the restaurants, yeah. <laughs> there it's been a tough, as we all know, yeah, this has true. been a tough time um, for for all of us. For restaurants, they're understaffed, they're overworked, um, and this is something that sounds great, but then it's like, well, how do I get over that first hump of, of setting it up? So we are now um, going back to them and uh, Recycling Works staff will come and do a, a site visit and go through the um, facility with them and help them uh, set up and also just show them examples from other restaurants that have done this. The other thing that's happening is in Massachusetts, um, we don't have mandated recycling. We have bans on material. So in Massachusetts, it, um, paper is banned from being thrown away. And, um, and so it leads to recycling, but it doesn't 
but it, it also encourages you to reduce the paper as well. So it helps you to be more creative. So the, the focus is on you can't throw it away, and then we hope that you will reduce it and then recycle it. There is also a ban on food waste in Massachusetts, and it's for institutions that produce one ton or more of food waste a week. And um, in this area, I don't know if MCLA is, meets that threshold or not. I know Williams College does, and so, um, so they have set up, they're mandated to, to set up a program to divert their food waste um, to, away from throwing it away. Um, and that mandate is going to change as of November 1st, where if you produce a half ton a week, you're going to be, you're banned from throwing your food waste in the in the trash. So um, so we're beginning to see this as a regulatory issue. Um, we as residents are not yet banned <laughs> to throw our food in the trash, but we're seeing that oh my goodness, it's so um, it's so much better to either reduce it or compost it. That what are the ways that we can um, really make that happen? There are some municipalities that have already instated these um, bans on throwing away organics. And Vermont, the whole state has, has that. Doesn't matter the quantity, doesn't matter if you're a resident or a, every, no one is allowed to throw um, organics away. And that started, it was a gradual process and now it's complete. And that started up maybe six months ago. So I, I don't know how it's going. I, I, can, I can imagine there's some balky people who don't wanna participate and do it, but I don't know what happens or if they, well, and I think in Massachusetts, what we've learned is that um, in instituting the ban, uh, the state wanted to make sure there was an infrastructure. So if you're going to ban the material, is there going to be an alternative, um, a viable alternative for you? And so I think that that's what's happening now is we're building the infrastructure for these alternatives. So we luckily can go to this compost facility that's right over the border. But we'll be looking to see, will others emerge? You know, a, a typical place for bringing organics has often been farms. They feed it to their pigs uh, and other animals, and some of them have anaerobic digesters, so they're looking for lots of quantity of organic material. So those are two other options. Right, yeah, that's growing. So uh, I guess our subtitle of our, our talk was Lessons Learned. So what have we learned? We've learned a lot. <laughs> We've learned a lot. Um, when, we fir when people first signed up um, to participate in the program, we asked them what, why. <laughs> what were they interested in? Why were they interested in composting? And um, these were their answers. They wanted to reduce waste. They wanted um, really to take climate action. And I, I think that we, we run into this a lot. It feels so enormous, the climate issue. How do we ever begin to tackle it? So here is a really concrete way that people can take action right uh, you know, locally. And right now, um, if you live in Williamstown and take your you know, trash, uh, it, your trash is picked up, it goes, much of it goes to a landfill. And in that landfill, that's where you know, it's producing this methane. So right. it's a real, um, it, you know, it's really gonna be a help to uh, divert it to compost. Um, and then some wanna make compost or topsoil for their own um, use and gardens. Uh, what else did we learn? We learned that Every, all avenues of outreach are important. So how do you get the word out? Every single way you possibly can. And uh, I think in a small town, word of mouth often is what, you know, kind of takes off eventually. Um, you want to know what your neighbors are doing or... We have a couple yeah. of ideas too. One of them is when we're ready to start opening it up to a larger area, we want to get yard signs. It says, we compost and ask people who are participants if they would put a yard sign out. Because I think people driving by might be curious and we'd have our website prominently displayed on our, which is Williamstown Compost, it's, it's our website. Well, and even um, in sort of like in the beginning of paper recycling, there were the blue boxes. Ah, yeah. We're kind of thinking, well, now we have the green bin and this itself is a, you know, kind of a sign. So people are very, very curious that yeah. they'll see that, uh, you know, oh, why do you have that green bin out at the end of your driveway? Another incentive that we're, this is more of an incentive than advertising, but we uh, we thought you've seen our squash tomato. Yeah. Well, I, I think it might be good to have one made up like in a circle and it says we compost and it's a like a sticker that a restaurant can put in their window 
and it's kind of visually interesting that squash tomato and it's not like it's not saying you know your grade a sanitation or something it's a little more interesting than that and maybe they would find that interesting so mm -hmm. we're looking for anything to get our you know lennox the town of lennox did a uh did that they they went around quite a few years ago to all their restaurants and they tried to encourage them to recycle their or you know to compost their food waste and they did have stickers that they have so if you go to dine in lennox you might see some of those on on their windows um, let's see, we also learned that it was important to offer all options. So um, what are people doing now with their waste and how do we make it easy for them to uh, do pretty much the same thing, but compost instead of throw their food waste away? And um, although I would have to say that dropping it off at the transfer station is, you know, really uh, is, is the most popular method. So people are already in Williamstown, people already go to the transfer station and they put their trash one place and you pay, you know, $2 for a small bag of trash um, in Williamstown. So it's a real incentive if instead of putting your food in, you know, in that bag, you're for free putting it in the shed. So it's a money saver um, on that, in that respect. Um, and let's see, what else did Maybe we Maybe we should open it up to questions. I think. Uh, I have to leave yeah. in 10 minutes, <laughs> and then I think can stay on. So if there are any questions, um, I mean, you can okay. answer any of them anyway. That sounds good. Yeah. I, I guess as we open it up, I guess I do want to just leave on this positive note, though, and I would have to say that... Um, People love composting. I, I mean, people just are delighted to have this opportunity. And so we, we sent out a survey um, to the people who had signed up in January, and we, ha we asked them, how is it going? What do you think? And they were just so overwhelmingly thankful and positive. And I just heard yesterday from somebody who was asking, and, um, and uh, asking about it, and I told her about the Eco Caddy, and she said, this is great. I've been dreaming about our town stepping up to the composting plate, and I look forward to talking it up. So anyway, we're glad we're answering people's dreams, but, uh, <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun, and it's, it's very concrete and, um, and positive. So do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's, what's yeah. next? Uh, so Unfunded. Yeah, those are unfunded mandates. They do have this Recycling Works um, program, so at no cost, um, you can have consulting to you know help you set up a program. But the idea is that you're paying right now to throw your waste away. So now you're going to find another alternative. And the idea would be to stay cost neutral in that respect and that there are options that will be, you know, equally affordable. But that, that is, um, yeah, so you're not getting paid to. One of the things compost. that we've, we've been telling restaurants and is that if they're going to divert their food waste, which is probably a large part of their waste that they're throwing away, that they can then have the part that's not stinky. Maybe it can be picked up every two weeks instead of every week. And then they'll save a lot of money on picking up. So we're hoping that that would make it cost neutral. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So I uh, spoke to a restaurant owner about this type of issue a while back. Somebody who takes over the wine in our data and it seems to be very enthusiastic about sustainability. And I said, why don't Right. So do you guys have a response for that? Well, I guess it would be, again, you'd look at what are they doing now. And, um, and if they're putting their, their waste in a dumpster, um, they would still be putting it yeah. in a tote. It would just be a different tote. And so, um, yeah. It's not increasing the problem because they already have the food waste somewhere. But if they could put it in something with a better lid, perhaps it might be better than their current situation. But it shouldn't increase that problem. That's why we have the shed instead of um, an outdoor place to keep them, because they kept talking about how the bears were going to come and tip it over and things. But the bear can't tip over our shed. 
So, um, and they also didn't want one of those things that, you know, the, the machine lifts it up onto the truck only because the truck that they wanted to use didn't have one of those options. So they just do use this kind of a dump truck. So the guys come and they, they can pick up the bins, which aren't very big, you can see, because as they get bigger, they get too heavy. So that's why they're the size, and that's why we have the situation system we have. No, no, they it's do it really, year yeah, no, it's, uh, we, well, we went on our field trip, I guess, in the spring, so it was a cool day, but I remember the first time I ever visited a compost um, site, it was a really cold winter day, and they had a big temperature probe, and, you know, we looked at it, and it was like 160 degrees, so, yeah, it just creates its own heat, in, so, yeah, so, um, winter, summer, yeah. yeah. Might be more of a problem in the summer, but I don't know. Yeah, well, then you put, put more air through, I yeah, guess. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. So Trevor Mance is actually one of our junior women seminar presenters from a number of years ago. Oh, ah. uh -huh. right. Um, I'm really curious, though, about what um, their operation is now, because when he spoke, um, they were getting materials from the cleaning company. I think the one material they were making was sort of a lawn amendment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have three they, yeah. products. Yeah. And yeah, Tre Trevor, uh, his initials were TAM, so his business was TAM, and he sold, uh, was purchased by Casella, and now is working with them, and yes, expanding their product line. In fact, we were in touch with them uh, before the presentation, and they said, oh, we're just preparing a brochure on our different products, so um, stay tuned. But yeah. yeah, they are expanding. And they are gonna bring, um, a big dump truck load of compost oh. into our uh, landfill area so that people who contribute can then take some home. So that seemed like a nice circular uh, final benefit. Yeah, close the loop. So we're just working that out now. That's one of our next steps. And, uh, and we've also um, actually already gotten inquiries from other communities. When we were setting out, we got in touch with other communities to find out what they had done so we could learn from them. And now, there yes. other communities are contacting us. So yes. that's, you know, pretty fun. Right. So that's uh, rewarding in itself. Well, thank you. Oh, no, I'm not uh, sure there's more questions. Oh, there are any more. <laughs> Great. Yes, yes. We've given them options. They can, the Casella prefers to not have bags, even compostable bags, because it's just harder for the microbes to get inside the bags. So, um, because they're digested in the next part, so it's better. So they say when you bring it, you know, dump it out of your bag and then throw the bag away separately in there, but just get the food out of there. And we have liners and we tell people who, when Casella picks them up, that you can either use a liner if you want, but leave it open. Or what I do, because I'm one of those, is that the, I have a liner that stretches tight. And so they just dump the compost out and then I get back with a sort of dirty liner and I use it for a while and then I throw it out and put in a new one. And I think it would be interesting once we have the pile of compost for people to pick up. I think you might dump your caddy and then just, you know, fill it with compost. And yes. there you go. It'll be Perfect. almost a self-cleaner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we don't have a water source at the transfer station. So when people do dump their containers, they, are, they, they, they can't can. just, you know, rinse them out. But uh, So I, I, I'm sure these questions will come up as it expands because um, our goal will be then to take the 40 and make it to 55 and then, you know, to keep growing that number. And as we do, these questions will come up. <laughs> There's a question in my mind too, that after we finish the pilot and begin regular, 
is Casella going to charge us a fortune to <laughs> pick this stuff up? There, and I don't know the answer to that. So the, we're, we're, they were toying with, they, they gave us some numbers about what they wanted and, and the guy in the town who's in charge of finances of this sort of thing was just, he was apoplexed. You know? <laughs> so, no way are we paying that much money. So, so it's an ongoing discussion. There would yes, be, yes. Yes. Well, and then that is our next, uh, as we now have more data, that's what we're going to be now looking at is what is, what, what's that balance going to look like? But they were, in this yeah. letter when they were telling us what the costs were going to be, they were complaining about the high costs of getting rid of the uh, recyclable materials. And so they're saying they have much higher costs than they did before. They're also complaining about the cost of gas, and we know that's legitimate at this moment. So they're justifying their very high costs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might have answered this already, but as an individual, can I take compost uh, of old materials to the place in Bennington and just drop it off? Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. It's a it's a commercial facility, so uh, yeah, it wouldn't be. Um, yeah, I, I don't think They're probably think so. gates and fences. I don't. Yeah, I don't even remember. when we went there, we had to go meet somebody, and then they escorted us in. And there, and it, and there, it's big equipment. And I didn't actually bring. Uh, I didn't show the the pictures of my uh, videos of the loaders and you know, dealing with the. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's an it's an industrial, commercial facility. Yeah. Oh. oh, well, there's an idea. Yeah, right. Yeah, incentives. I think that's, a, yes. that's a good idea. Shame them. Right. <laughs> no, we reward them. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, don't forget oh, your oh, microphone. We knew I was going to do that. <laughs> Not yet, yeah, not yet, but I think that it's coming, you know, and I think that it's um it's it's helpful to be anticipating there's nothing better than getting ready for it, you know, instead of waiting for it to be law um so if you can get get help and uh and I think we are wondering if there need to be some upfront financial incentives for the restaurants because it is bringing on a new system and having some uh, maybe an investment in some new equipment so um so I think we'll be exploring other communities where the restaurant programs have been successful really what's the key been there and we so we need to do our homework on that you know it was so helpful to learn from the other communities about the residential part but we haven't done the field trips yet uh, for restaurants so yeah and schools um, as well so the um, but the local schools are are interested and um, and then we're interested in helping build it into the curriculum too because you know as students are learning about uh, resources and climate and waste and systems you know how do how do we fold that in and then practice it I think that we find that the best way is to try a little bit of everything. And I think sometimes we um, start with um, the press <laughs> and uh, and then um, begin feeding it in with our different networks. Um, and the, uh, the cool committee in the town of Williamstown is also involved right now in a net zero initiative. And so I think we're trying to find places to dovetail the, this activity in with our other goals as, as a community. So um, I think just, uh, I mean, I guess I'd be interested from you, what stands out here? Is it, is it motivating to learn that we throw so much food away? Or is that just another statistic that isn't interesting? Like, what, you know, what would, motivating behavior change is, is you know, definitely a challenge. So, um, so our, we'll be educating through our networks, through the schools, through the press, 
um, you name it. <laughs> you have any ideas? And here, here we are. <laughs> Okay. You're moving towards a future um, municipal mandate in Williamstown, and I think you started off with that idea that there was a discussion about um, a mandate. Yeah, I don't know that we are ready or need that. I guess I think that um, the state seems to be taking the lead for us in that way. And I think if we can make the program um, easy, uh, accessible, affordable, uh, I think it's going to, you know, kind of take off. And it is, you know, it's taking off with, with very little already. And uh, yeah, so I think that it, it will grow. I, I, I don't know that we would necessarily go that route, but I don't know. Susan might have a thought about that. <laughs> I, I wonder if it's um, the tax funds and the discussion about tax funds. I, I, my sense is that almost everybody I've talked to like, doesn't know that they're not supposed to put organic waste in the trash or that there's anything wrong with doing that. Mm -hmm. Is this an opportunity to say, listen, it's, there is already something there, but it's going to get tighter, and you know, why not? Right. It, it's coming, yes. And I think, and maybe making that half ton mean something to like what's a half ton of food waste? You know, so how do, how do we make how do we make that tangible to people? So if you produce, you know, four totes. I think that's about what we heard it was. It's about four totes. And so um, there are going to be the larger restaurants that are going to now need to comply. And so it's coming. And and then there are some communities um, where it's, you know, it, it's a municipal service. We in Williamstown, in Williamstown, uh, trash pickup is not a municipal service. So it makes it a little harder, uh, more challenging to introduce this than it might be in a, in a city that offers municipal services because then you just, you know, offer it right along. We have to offer our three different choices. So, um, yeah, but I think that being proactive is something that we will hope people um, people will do. And I think we also, I, I know we're focusing on composting, but we are um, cognizant that Composting is a disposal option. <laughs> and so really, if anything we can do to reduce um, our food waste um, by our purchasing practices, uh, incur you know, if you've kind of heard of the ugly food movement, so, it, you know, some of the food that gets thrown away is just because it doesn't look good, you know, so it gets tossed and then where does it go? So um, embracing, <laughs> you know, crooked carrots <laughs> would be right up there. So, and, ha and encouraging, you know, grocery stores, even if they just offer it at a, a bit of a lower cost, you know, that would be, you know, it's happening. So I think we just want to keep encouraging it um, and valuing it. So. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, interesting. That'd be good. And that goes along with our energy efficiency and reducing energy use. So it all kind of comes comes together and uh, and then having more opportunities for you know our, we're kind of separated from our waste you know we just throw it away and we, you know kind of remember the in my, when my kids were in third grade there the, the curriculum was there is no a way or where is a way and we're, we're just it's like energy these become invisible problems that we're not really faced with so if we can just help make it more visible 
but as I say, this has <laughs> also been fun, and people really are enjoying um, being able to, you know, take their food waste, and and they're going to like being able to go pick up compost at the, you know, at the transfer station afterwards. So um, I think having a way of the community coming together in this positive way um, and finding a positive solution is, um, you know, it's kind of a home run. So we would want to promote more of that. So. Well, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.